And uh, old uh, Black Eyes is back. He's died over a thousand times on stage. He once sent an album to Chairman Mao. A bit of a one-man cultural revolution he is. He's been Australia's Entertainer of the Year, it seems, for forever. But in fact, uh, for the last two years at least. We'll talk to him later, but now here he is, the man with a voice, someone said, like an overladen semi-trailer, struggling to slip into gear. <laughs> I didn't say that. Please welcome, it's a great pleasure, John English and the Foster Brothers with their new single, Emotion. Brothers, some good old-fashioned rock and roll. Yesterday we had the uh, harpsichord, tomorrow we have the violinist, today we had John English and rock and roll. <laughs> Fantastic. Great stuff. We'll talk to John after the break. We'll talk about uh, football, amongst other things. Good subject. Why not? Football, the VFL Grand Final coming up and the Sydney Grand Final coming up and he's a football fanatic, so we'll talk to him. As I said, football fever is rising as the weekend gets closer. For the Grand Final in Sydney and Melbourne, tickets have, of course, been sold out for weeks. There's been no way of getting in unless you could uh, sing for your supper or unless you could sing for a seat. 
My next guest is uh, doing just that, or has done just that. Please welcome him back, footy fanatic John English. <laughs> Welcome back. You'll do anything for a seat to the VFL. Got to, yeah, and and the rugby league. All right. Well, okay. But how did you tell us about singing for a seat? Uh, well, going back a few years, we're you know very much Sydney boys, and uh, there was a bit of an embargo on the old Aussie rules up here, <laughs> much as there is on the rugby league down in Melbourne. Drives you crazy trying to find out the results. Um, and some people from Fitzroy Football Club came along to a gig, and they were kind of on a on a semi sort of recruitment drive, and you know to interest people from other states in Aussie rules and. They said, would you like to follow the team? So we went out and watched them play, and apparently they hadn't won a game in ages, and the day we went out and watched them play, they beat North Melbourne. So we've been following them ever since, and we do a free, uh, one of these grand final breakfasts, which is an Aussie institution, where everyone gets up at 10 in the morning and drinks champagne and has roast pork. And I've never been able to do it. <laughs> but we, we do a half hour and the rest of it, and, and our fee for that is uh, seats to the grand final. Seats for the, for the crew. Yeah. All right, what about predictions then? Essendon against uh, Hawthorne? Yes. Um, you've got to, you'd be mad to go against Essendon, wouldn't you, really? Sure would. But it's mm. going to be fun and games. Is this Lee Matthews' last game? Uh, it probably is. I guess if they win, it's going to be his last game, isn't it? It'd be very interesting then. What, what about points then? Are you prepared to go as far as how far the, Dons are going to, the Bombers are going to win? Um, two goals, 12 points. Two goals. Anyone from Melbourne? No, one Blank from Melbourne. Looks. You're lucky. <laughs> You're lucky. We had them. All right, in Sydney, it's Canterbury against St George. Mm. Mm. OK, I think St George will do it, and I think they'll... Uh... <laughs> yeah, this is, I'm a singer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think Canterbury might have a few... carrying a few injuries into the game, frankly. I well, thought last they played week, very, very well against my team last week. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, I, I just think they're going to have. There's going to be a few injury problems, and, that, and it's going to be a, a big bruising game. But you're doing both. Yeah, I'm, I'm going down to see both as well. I'm a football nut as well. Now, what about the? Um, how many points then do you think the the Saints are going to win by? Well, my manager is a rabid St George supporter, and uh, he's he's offering five and a half. Five and, five and, and a half, half points. Mm. We've got some people down from Queensland have come down actually to see the game uh, in <laughs> Sydney on Sunday. Uh -huh. All right, so that's. Uh, you heard him say it. Two goals, uh, two for, goals for the two Bombers. Goals for Essendon, yeah. Yeah. And uh, five and a half or six points? Six points. No, you have to go five and a half, mm. I think, because mm. it's, it's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Money. I mean, why the, why the obsession? Are you, are you uh, still the, uh, the frustrated jock? Are you, uh, would you have, if you had your druthers, would you have sort of been a, a great sportsman rather than a, a great entertainer? Yeah, grass is always greener. I think so. I don't know. I, I mean, I used to play the game um, out in Cabramatta. Well, rugby league? Yeah. And uh, I was in the Parramatta Juniors, so it's a bit of a hard stigma to shake following Parramatta because if you're stuck with them through the dreadful lean years, uh, when they finally won it, we're still getting over the fact that we've actually won a premiership. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, uh, but you played basketball at uni and also at school for the state? Yeah, yeah, I played a lot of basketball. Um, that was actually why I didn't play as much football at school. I was a fanatic basketball player. But then I got lost to rock and roll at a sort of early age. You found I, I could pull more birds. <laughs> simple as that, eh? Yeah, simple as that. Much better than a basketball player. You said in the 60s that, I read somewhere that you said that you were in the 60s part hoodlum, part hippie. Yeah, I was a weekend hippie, you know. It was just the, the current trend. See, at Cabramatta, you, uh, you had an option of three things to do. You, you could go and play organised sport, you could hang around the station and beat people up, or you could play guitar. And I opted out for sport first, followed by guitar. It was much easier. <laughs> And you, you sort of muddled into the guitar. Was it, was it the, the attraction of the Johnny O'Keefe? Was it the attraction of Elvis, that sort of thing that you... It was the Beatles, actually. I'm of that sort of perfect age group that I sort of turned 12 or 13 when the first Beatle record, you know, and, and puberty was sort of running rampant through my body and the pimples and the hormones were going nuts, starting to look at girls in a different way and actually starting to listen to the radio. And uh, She Loves You was a hit. So that, I was just gone from that point on. This is what I want to do in front of the t mirror with the tennis racket and all that. You know. <laughs> what, what do TV reporters do when they fantasise? They're talking to a Stand stand in front of the mirror with a toothbrush. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> talk, talking to a toothbrush. Yeah. Well, what about? I mean, now you're approaching forty, um, somewhere somewhere down the track there. Yeah. I hate, I hate to, somewhere down the track. I hate to say it, but I mean, what do you find? Are you thinking of middle age now? You're thinking, hang on, I'm I'm not quite the athlete that I was 20 years ago. That I can't do when you try and. Uh, horse around with the kids now that, mm. uh, that you are ageing? Yes. yes, yes. Can you live with that? 
I'm going to have to, aren't I? I have no choice. Yeah. I, it's, uh, uh, you have these mad attacks of paranoia. Like, uh, I'm 36, my, my daughter is... My daughter's 12, my God. <laughs> 36D cup or something, it's terrifying. <laughs> I hope she's not watching. She's going to be embarrassed. No, um, and she... Uh, you you realise that her friends' fathers are like, um, you know, policemen and farmers and vets and stuff, and, and Dad has long hair and wears tight trousers. And you say you realise what, what a ludicrous occupation it is, yeah. But then again, it's fun. Yeah. Well, how, how long does it remain fun? I mean, I, I read as well that you said that you don't want to be at 45 or 46 mm. trying to fit into the tight trousers and, uh, and still checking the length of the hair. No, if you that, got any. that's absurd. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's absurd. Uh, I, I have very good friends around me that will quietly take me aside and say, John, you look ridiculous. <laughs> and I'll go, oh. But then again, I mean, last year I was doing um, comic opera like traditional Gilbert and Sullivan in, yes. in bloody purple tights, you know? <laughs> <laughs> at 11 in the morning at the Melbourne Concert Hall, and that's when you start figuring, this is ridiculous. Well, what's, a, uh, what's an old uh, rock and roll singer got to do when he turns 45 or 50 then? I mean, we, we've now seen Mick Jagger I was gonna say, get yeah. close to, we've seen Rod Stewart, we've seen uh, Elton John. Well, I guess... Uh... I mean, I don't know. We're in this weird situation where rock and roll was, what, 1955? You're a first generation, really, aren't you? Well, that's kind sense. of second, really. The, 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 the guys... That were <laughs> first, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it, I don't know, it just keeps going. See, I don't think that when I reach 60, I'll suddenly stop listening to Triple M and start listening to 2CH. <laughs> suddenly... You know, overnight, stop listening to the Rolling Stones and start listening to Nana Muscuri. I mean, I don't... Does it work, does it work that way? I don't know. No, see? No. What, well, what do you do? Do you go to the farm? I mean, do you see yourself as a, as a gentleman farmer? Is that the next occupation? I think what I'll probably do is try my hand at, at, at writing a, a bit more in production and maybe sort of gradually move into the character acting role as opposed to sort of acting acting. Character and acting is when you're too old and ugly to, to play. <laughs> is, that, is that it, is it? That's the definition of character acting. But you regard yourself up to now certainly as a singer who acts, as sure. against an actor who sings. So I, your background has been singing, mm. you figure the next sort of phase is, is acting. Well, I, it's, just a, it's just an extension of what I've been doing anyway, really. It's, you know, when you sing, you've got to, you put a part of yourself into a song, um, you're portraying a character, um, then you basically eliminate the music and play it that way. But you, the most important thing is to be able to see yourself doing it. John, um, what do you see, see yourself doing then in terms of character acting? What sort of roles could John English play, do you think, as a character actor? I was a very, very good drug-crazed axe-murdering <laughs> uh, Several Crawfords episodes. Maybe they'll write in a part in country practice for an ageing drug-crazed axe-murdering <laughs> hippie. I'm, in fact, available, and they film it out by my place every day. <laughs> So you could do that. You don't see yourself as the smooth, suave uh, lover in, in some Aussie film? This? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned the quote at the, at the top of the program. Who said it, that your voice sounds like an overladen semi-trailer struggling to slip into gear? Did you ever track that bloke down? It was a guy that wrote for The Age and he's a reviewer. <laughs> 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 he's now writing police reports, is he? <laughs> it probably is. Um, but he was actually being quite kind. He said, he said it was good anyway. I don't know who you expect me to sound like June Bronner, are they? <laughs> well, in fact, you, the critics have been very kind to you, haven't they? They have. Looking through the file, do you, there, there is no one who's tipped a bucket on you. No, nobody, yeah. Do you threaten them? Well, I don't know. I, I, I go through this whole routine of, oh, my God, the critics, and they've never actually done anything at all to me. They've always said, oh, yes, John was good. All right, this quote that you allegedly, something you allegedly said, success hasn't changed me. I've always had a big head. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you said that. Monster ego. It's, you know, feed this giant, starving ego every day and I'll be a happy and content person. All right. We'll see you at the football on Saturday and Sunday. Definitely, please, yeah. please thank uh, John English. <laughs> and let me say that uh, you can catch uh, John and the band at uh, Hornsby RSL tonight. Hey, hey, it's on Saturday night. Hey, hey, on Saturday night on the, right, yeah. on the box. In October, touring through Tasmania and Queensland, so brace yourselves and uh, watch the newspapers for those dates. Th John, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. After the break, Janine Reid has a song for you. Different kind of singer, Janine Reid. <laughs>